There is the goal of having strong interaction between light and matter, and in particular on a quantum level. And um, this actually goes both ways. First of all, you want to control the matter with the light, but you also want to control the, the light with the matter. Usually the, the ingredients that we have is some atoms, and in particular the, the quantum states of the atoms, or some of them, and some laser light of either one frequency or several frequencies. So normally, if in, in a case like that, if you shine the light into the matter, it gets absorbed, especially if the energy of the, of the laser light is the same or similar as the transition energy between these different atomic, um, the atomic levels. And in that case, the, the, the light is, is, um, you shine the light in, the electrons are excited and the light is absorbed in this gun. That means on resonance, that means if these energies are the same, the light is strongly absorbed. But at the same time, of course, that's where the, where the interaction between the light and the matter is the strongest. But if the light is absorbed, there is no light left anymore. So it's, it, this is not a very good situation if you still want to do something with the light afterwards. And this is where this electromagnetically induced transparency comes from. So what does that mean? Electromagnetic um, refers to the electromagnetic field, the light field. Um, induced means that this is the, the reason, um, and transparency means that where before the matter was absorbing it, now it's transparent. You send your laser, your laser light in, on or near resonant, and it gets absorbed. Then you take a second laser light on some kind of different frequency, you shine that in as well, and also shine the first laser light in, and if you both shine them in, suddenly this becomes transparent. That means the light actually does come on, on the, out on the other side. There are several ways to, to explain this. Um, the easiest, if I make a small detour and, and explain the so-called optical pumping, which is exactly what it, what it says. It's a kind of a pumping process. You pump electrons from one state into the other using um, optics. And the way you do that, imagine you have, you have one excited level and two ground levels which are separate. So it's like two pots of electrons here and one pot of electron up here. And you have a pump which pumps the, the electrons from both of these lower pots into the higher pots. But there's a decay, so they trickle down. Now you pump them only from one pot in the upper pot, but they still trickle down to both sides. Of course, if you do that for a long time, what happens? The one from which you pump it out becomes empty and all the electrons all collect in the other one, right? So what happens once you are at that point? The one pot is full with all the electrons, but you are still happily pumping on the other, on the other transition. Of course, nothing happens because there are no, there are no electrons to, to pump up anymore. As soon as there are no electrons to pump up anymore, the light is not absorbed anymore and goes through. So this, this project, the, the process of optical pumping is like that. You, you start with basically equally filled electron pots. You shine your light in, do that for a while, pump, pump, pump. Eventually, you will see the light come out again on the other side. So far, this is not EIT or electromagnetically induced transparency. This is just optical pumping, but we are nearly there. So now, if you if you shine two lasers in at the same point, you pump basically on both of those transitions, you can then um, do a small kind of mathematical or definition trick by doing a different so-called superpositions of these two ground states, such that basically both of these lasers mathematically pump on the same transition and you still have an empty transition. And then you do this pumping again, one pot gets empty, the, the, all the laser light is on the other, and it becomes transparent. Only that we have now two lasers. And these two lasers, they can be both, um, they couple different transitions, could be just different light polarization, could be completely different frequencies, so it, it, it does not matter. But in this case, we have a so-called superposition state, which has a little bit of this pot, a little bit of this pot, which now is empty. Um, on which the, the laser light pumps, and we have another superposition state which has a little bit of this and a little bit of that, which has all the electron. But it does not couple, and so it's, it's dark. This is the so-called dark state. And 
um, the effect is that if we now do that all on resonance, so the lasers, they fit exactly those transitions, you, you get both the laser lights through, but if you switch one of them off, it gets normally absorbed. Nothing happens anymore. Okay. So this is what we call electromagnetically in induced transparency. This is this, this low lying state that is not coupled, it's called dark state. There are a couple of more names for that that all describe the, the, the same, um, same phenomenon. Coherent population trapping, because you, pop, you trap this population in this one superposition. This was discovered around 1990 by actually several groups, two in the US and one in Russia at the same time. And um, in fact, um, there were some people already about 15 years earlier um, at several places who, who discovered already some aspects of that. And to start with, that was really a, just a big surprise, but of no particular practical importance or an importance for other areas of physics. One of the first um, so-called applications of that was to stay laser without inversion. So usually if you, if you have a laser, you have to have more electrons in the upper state and in the lower state, otherwise this, this lasing process doesn't work. This sometimes is very hard to do. So it would be nice if you could get a laser action with just a few electrons up there and most of the electrons in the lower parts. And if you have this transparency, that means you have all the electrons in the lower part and still you already have transparency instead of absorption, so you're already halfway there, right? So if you now just by some means put just a few electrons on top, you will get lasing on this, on this previously empty transition. Um, this was in, in, uh, done in the early 90s, both first theoretically and very soon after experimentally. It turned out it's actually a pretty hard problem, but it works. But subsequently, all in the, I would say, first half of the 90s, there were an exploding number of, of tools that were developed on, on um, the basis of this electromagnetically trans induced transparency. One of them is the so-called stirrup stimulated Raman adiabatic passage, um, which basically uses EIT in order to, in a very directed and, and controlled way to transport electron from one state into another without kind of losing either, um, either population or electrons on the way, but also not the, the quantum mechanical information or the so-called phase information. This is by now a workhorse of all of atomic physics, especially of all of molecular physics. So for example, if you want to get ultra cold polar molecules, without this, you can't you can forget it. it, just does not work. Um, another thing which I would like to explain in a little bit more detail is the so-called slow light. Um, slow light is actually something which was discovered, I think about 99. The idea of slow light is really literally light usually we, we assume it, it moves with the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second. And we really literally slow it down. And the slow down, the first, the first publications, was, I think it was a Nature article which said, or oh, the, the light is now speed of a bicyclist. For that, one has to explain there are actually two light speeds. The one is the so-called phase velocity. This is the speed with which in a, in a light wave or a water wave or anything like that, any wave crest moves. The group velocity is in principle the more important one. The group velocity would be, for example, the, the, the speed with which a pulse moves or with which, a, for example, a tsunami wave moves or something like that. That's what we call the group velocity. In vacuum, both the phase and the group velocities are both 300,000 um, kilometers per hour. Um, however, with EIT, this group velocity can be, can be slowed down. And the idea is here that the index of refraction, which is basically, in a sense, the other side of the metal of the absorption, if you change the absorption to transparency, you automatically also uh, change the so-called dispersion or index of refraction. 
and the, if you write down the formula for the, for the group velocity, you will see that the slope of the dispersion curve is in the denominator of the group velocity. So if you get the slope very steep, the group velocity gets very slow. And the way you get the slope very steep is basically by achieving EIT, which does this automatically. So if you have EIT, you automatically have also slow light. It was just that for basically 10 years, people did EIT without actually realizing that they also have slow light. And just to, to wrap this particular part up, um, if you can do slow light, you can also do stopped light. You can hold it all together. So before you have a very steep slope in this curve, which gives you a large number in the denominator, and the idea is, from a mathematical standpoint, just instead of having a very steep slope, just making this the, the slope infinitely deep, this, this can be done um, by basically, if you have, if we go back to EIT, you have these two lasers, by turning down one of those lasers to basically zero, slowly, and basically trapping the light inside the medium. The nice thing is you can then turn it slowly on again, and kind of send it on its way again. This stopped light, this is of course very fancy, but can one do something with that? Can one actually develop that any further? So one way is that, that light fields or photons, of course, contain quantum information. And this, this quantum information can be very conveniently stored in material with this low light, because you trap it in there, when you are done with storing, you let it out by just switching the laser off again. This um, is a very promising research for everything that has to do with quantum information, with, with quantum computation, with, with any kind of nonlinear photon switching, etc. However, the problem is that in order to make that work perfectly, one has to still work a little bit harder. So far, um, this light storage or light stopping can be done, but not all the information can yet be retrieved because due to, um, due to so-called decoherence in the medium, which is, comes from collisions, from the fact that the, the atom move around, etc., the information in the medium is degraded quite a bit, even on a time scale of a millisecond or so. And the goal is, of course, to improve all that, perhaps move that from an atomic gas into a solid state, and by that way make it much more stable so that you really can store it for an infinite amount of time and can really use the whole information that was stored actually retrieved back. <laughs>